Inheritance in C++ can be tricky, especially if several different classes are involved. Today I will show you a pattern called base from member. This pattern is useful in specializing code from libraries, and it is good for providing a good encapsulation for the specialized code. Let's shortly walk through this small example of code. We do have here two different classes, one is called output and one is called string writer. And the output is used in the string writer as an object to actually write the output. This is a pattern that is often used as dependency injection and it is often used in libraries. So you can find something like this in the string libraries or in the stream libraries, for instance. And it's a useful pattern for, for separating data and uh, whatever you want to do with it. Um, so here we have the output. The output is uh, put it per definition virtual, so it can be specialized. It's a write function with a number, and we see the number is 42. And the string writer in his constructor does nothing different than only calling the write of the output. And in the main program, we have an output and we create a writer using the reference of the output. And this should just print us the number 42. Pretty much code for writing a number 42, but it's useful to explain this. So we can here build this example, uh, it goes quite fast because it's not a lot of code. And then we can run the example and we see the output is number 42. Now let's consider we want to customize our output. So we derive from the output class and create our own custom class. So we use the custom output class and we derive from output by using the public output. Now we just overwrite this number function. And here we, for instance, output number 43. And as the last step, we need to use this customized output in our code. And then we can build it and run it and it should work. So we build it, we run it, and we see the output is now 43. But because we are good developers, we want to make the life easy for our users. So we also decide to implement the custom string writer function. And the string writer uh, object here that we need to create should encapsulate that we're using the custom output. So our user is not even able to use something else than a custom output. So let's do that. We implement the class called uh, custom string writer. And here we derive from the string writer class because we also want to use what the string writer class is offering. Then we create here the object and in the constructor of our class, we don't want to take any argument because we say that this should be inherited. And then we need to call the base class constructor and the base class constructor needs to be called with the output. So we use this output, we put it here into some private member stuff and we use the output here. Now we can remove it from here and we can also remove it here and just use the custom string writer. Now let's format this one and we see that we forgot here to actually create a function. So we do that. We have now created the function, an empty constructor, and this one is using the output. We will run into problems here, but let's just shortly build the code and run it and see what happens. Building works as expected. And now we run the code and there is no output. Something is going on here. So let me shortly explain. We now have a custom string writer object and this object has a data member, which is our custom output. This is exactly how we want it because we want to make it easy for our users. However, the main problem is that base classes are initialized first. So this custom output doesn't even exist at the point in time where the string writer object is initialized. So this output here, which is used in the string writer object, uh, the constructor of the string writer object, it doesn't even exist at the point in time where the string writer is actually um, constructed. So what happens is that the call to this uh, function here, to the write function, does nothing and is actually undefined behavior. Apparently GCC or Clang or whatever compiler I'm using here is able to somehow gracefully ignore that one without crashing, but usually this should even crash your program. The problem here is that this 
member here is created after the call to the constructor. The fix for that is the pattern that I want to show you today and it's called base from member. What we need to do is to introduce a dummy class which is holding this data map. But let me show you. So we create a dummy class and this call we, we call it dummy but we could actually name it something else. And this dummy class does nothing else then just hold the member. So we make this one here protected because we want that our class later on is actually able to access this data member. And now we inherit also from this dummy class. The main point here is that we need to use inheritance in a way that this one comes first because from a standard it's clearly defined that um, the base members they are constructed and initialized in the order of which they are defined so the dummy will be firstly constructed and then the string writer will be constructed and now because the dummy holds the data or holds the custom output object the string writer can actually access the output because it has already been created by the base class, which is dummy. And we can now compile this one. And we see that the output of our custom output, okay, we still need to have a semicolon here. Um, the output will be generated as we expect. So we run this program and we see we have here now the custom output of 43, which is what we want to have from our custom output object. The interface now is super easy to use for your user, but the main thing that I wanted you to show today is exactly this one. We derive from the dummy object. The dummy object is created first, and that's why the output is existing at the point where string writer actually gets constructed. The only thing that you need to be careful here is that the dummy needs to be before the string writer, right? So if I swap these two things around, and probably this is something, depending on your colleagues, you actually should document that this has to be like that. Because if I swap this around and build it, we will run into the exactly same undefined behavior. You see no output, program is crashing, because the dummy object is now created after the string writer object. That's all that I have for you today. I hope you learned something about the pattern called base from member. It's really useful to make your interfaces as small as possible and to derive from some objects that might be defined in some libraries. If you still want to learn more, I suggest you watch this video next and as always, enjoy coding.